Mazinga, one of the many stops in no man's land between Lake Victoria and Dar es Salaam, Tanzania's larger city. This railway line was built more than 100 years ago by the Germans, at that time the colonial power. One day the train runs into Dar es Salaam, the other day back to Lake Victoria. Often delayed by hours. Each time the train stops somewhere along the track, people rush out their homes to sell their local products and homemade food. The train as the highlight of the day. Our train runs again. A last quick sale and the vendors have to wait for the next train tomorrow. Tanzania is my new destination on a global train journey through six continents. I'm traveling in a train full of expectations and hope. Whole families are moving to the city in search of a better life. Like them, I'm open to everything and everybody in search of something new and happiness. President
na na kwa hiyo wanapenda sana wana fry sana kwa ile kitu wamezoea toka huko kwa hiyo hata kiangalia wanajaribu kuchukua kitu fulani wanaweka kichwani mwao baadaye mshafika kule na mama jana niliona kitu fulani kuna yani mko kama ni wanaweka kwenye kumbukumbu zao anaanza kusimulia wao kama nini walichokiona kule kwa hiyo kuna kitu fulani wao na kistadi hapo usije ukashangaa baadaye kuja ukaulizwa mbona fly tumefika tukikuta kitu kama hichi unaona kwa hiyo ni jukumu lako la wewe kumbukumbu wakati mgeni tunakuwa tunakuwa napata maswali fulani ni mazito ya watoto wanakuwa wadadisi sana kule tulikotoka tulikaa muda mrefu huku Mbeya. Kwa hiyo tulipenda sana kubadilisha hali ya mazingira ya sehemu nyingine na pale tulipokuwa tukiishi si mjini sana ni kijijini. Kwa hiyo tulipenda tu tukaishi maisha angalau ya mjini labda tuweze tukaendelea pale ambapo tulipo labda tukaenda mbele zaidi. Unaona? Na tukabadilisha hali hali ya hewa ya mazingira ya, ya pale ya kijijini tukaenda tukabadilisha hali ya hewa ya mjini. Na pia kuwapa watoto wetu upeo mkubwa wa kuweza kusoma na kuweza kuendelea kimasomo kwa sababu pale ni pafinyu sana elimu haiwezi kupatikana bora zaidi kama mjini wenzetu wana watu wao wanapopata elimu bora yapo kwa tunasikitika kwa sababu tunaacha marafiki jirani lakini sio mbaya ipo siku tunakuja tutakuja kuona. Tunakwenda tunaenda kuanza maisha mapya. Na watu wengine na tutajitahidi kuishi kama vile tulivyotoka kule tulipotoka. Lazima ina kuwepo kwa sababu si unakuwa ni mgeni. Lazima uwe na ile hofu kidogo kwa sababu hujazoea maisha ya kule lakini kwa jinsi siku zinavyozidi sogea lazima utani badilika na utajipa moyo eh hey. I grew up in Mwanza coming from a very simple you know small life we lived on the hills right on the end of the hill we say near Lake Victoria we had the lake in front of us we did not have cell phones we did not have computers we did not have radios we had nothing no TVs the only thing we had was the lake in front of us the hill right next to us and the simple things so i i never dreamt of being in, in a city of growing up with big big you know houses that was not part of my whole imagination i i loved you know just growing up on the river with the little hut made of you know, all those bamboo sticks so for me that was that was like a fairy tale there are many people who conceive Africa as a um, horrible, scary, dangerous place. <laughs> but they don't realize what Africa is all about because they've never been here. But for those people who have come here and seen what the lifestyle is like, they see a total different side to it. For us who are born here, we see a total different life to it. In, in Tanzania, we are so, there's a saying, Pole Pole and we are so used to going slow and steady and, and everything comes with a flow. You know, we go with the flow, we, we take things as they come. Many people ask me that they're like, how do you relate to, to Tanzania? Well, I call myself Afro-Asian because my great-grandfather, when he was 15, he moved to Africa, he moved to Tanzania to work on the plantations, the clothes, clothes plantations. He had children and they got married and we are the third generation now, we are the great grandchildren. And um, when I came from Mwanza, I was very young and uh, I did not know what to expect when I came to Dar es Salaam. But when I came to Dar es Salaam, um, there, was, there was this cultural show that was happening and it was a fashion show where they asked me to try and I never modeled in my life but I was like yeah why not so I did this fashion show it was just for fun you know go up there have fun and do things 
And apparently that day, the, the judge for the night was a fashion designer, a very famous and prominent fashion designer in Tanzania. And um, after the show, he approached me and he's like, why don't you start modeling and why don't you become my model? And for me, that was a big breakthrough. I'm like, modeling me? No. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know how to. And he's like, you know, you learn. And I was 15 at that time. So I started modeling. I did my first show and then later on built myself. When I turned 18, uh, I was approached to participate in Miss Earth. Now, never in the history of Tanzania has an Asian girl ever participated. Leave aside winning. They've never even participated. And I was the first Asian you know, girl to come forward and say, why not? You know? Uh, and I participated. And by God's grace, I won. And that was like, wow, I did not expect it, but I did win. And um, being the only Asian in the whole group of 26 candidates and, and winning uh, was uh, a surprise to me, but a dream come true at the same time. Although, after I won, it was a controversy. Like, many, many people were not very happy. And they said, why did an Indian girl take the title of Miss Tanzania? For me that was stunning, it was also shocking because why not? I'm born here, I'm holding a Tanzanian passport, why not? But the people felt that this was a drastic change towards what they believed in, towards their you know their whole lifestyle, towards you know the whole modernization of Africa and they felt having an Indian beauty queen would be changing their concept of an African nation. It was a new change. And, and you know when a new change comes into a country, it, it takes people a while to, to accept it. And, and I don't really, I don't get upset when I think about it. Why did they say, you know, why, why did they complain? Because in time, they accepted me. It was a drastic change for me. Richa belongs to the tiny Indian community in Tanzania. They are descendants of sailors plantation workers and railway workers. This tiny minority counts about 40,000 people, less than half a percent of the population. Most live here for over 100 years, after a dangerous sailing journey from India across the ocean. It is now a well-established, prosperous community. I love coming to this place just to meditate and you know, go back to, towards you know, history and all that. Um, you know what, there is a sense of being inspired when you come to a place like this. I see my children growing up with the African culture, with the beauty of the sea and the wind and the sound of the waves. And, and the best part is the humbleness of, of the Tanzanian people. We are known to be one of the most humble and, and you know, peaceful countries in Africa. And um, I think it's a very good you know touch to having my kids grow up in a place like this rather than seeing a modernized place I would like I would love them and like them to see a place like this if someone was to tell me leave Tanzania and go to, to another you know let's just say Europe for example I would not really be able to adjust because I am so used to being here this is my home I, I just love everything about Tanzania so it would take me a lot of efforts I would have to really put a lot of efforts to, to adjust but I am very proud of my grandmother because uh, she came here and, and she says it by herself. She said, when I first came, to me this was being dropped in the middle of a jungle. She's like, I didn't know anything, I didn't know the language, I didn't know how to fit in. And she's always giving me stories and turning back to how her life all began, how she left Goa, got married and came here. And she comes to Africa, which is a whole total different part of the world and a whole new, you know, background. Um, but how she adapted is something that is very unique. She got so used to it that now, if she was to go back to Goa, she would not be happy. <laughs> She's like, I don't think I would ever want to go back to Goa because I have adapted to the whole lifestyle. I love this place. This, is, this has become home. So yes, she did have a lot of courage and I, and I feel that she was a strong character. Yeah, because if I'm told to leave today, I would not. For sure, I would not. <laughs> I am again on the train, now on my way to Zambia. In the local language Swahili, people call this railway Uburu. In English, the railway to freedom. 
Again, I experienced the train as the main connection between city and countryside, between a life of hope, study and progress, or a life of stagnation and poverty. I don't think if Africa is lost, it's only that uh, most of the time people who are coming to get information or get stories about Africa are only looking for bad stories about Africa. But if you come for the intention of looking good things about Africa, like what you're doing, there are so many beautiful things here in Africa. There are so many um, achievements and developments from independence up to now that people are really, really trying very hard to get somewhere. And the good thing about Africans, we have courage that you go to any other country that you cannot find. Yes, there are lots of diseases, there are lots of bad things that are happening. But still, it happens today and a few minutes later people are waking up, putting them together and move on with life like nothing has ever happened. And that kind of courage, I don't think if it can be found easily anywhere. You can reach wherever you want to reach if you just put a limit any any anything have a limit but it depends on who you want to be or how you want to be so i believe if you want to get somewhere someday you have to work extra hard than anybody else does because some people want to just finish school get employed just earn money for living and that's it but I want to finish school, be able to contribute to the society that I am living in. And I think and I believe the only way to do that is to work very, very hard, believe in yourself and never give up. And take some good advices from people around you, people with more experience than you. Complain should be out of the question if you ask me because if you complain too much then you will have reason to say ah, I felt because they have done this and this and this so that should be out of the question. It doesn't matter whether I have something but what matters is what I have in my head and what I can do with it in order to help myself to be where I want to be. I'm working, I'm studying, there are other, so many things that I have to take care of, so I have to work extra hard. It's the same with women. They want to prove that yes, we can do it. We want to show that we are, we are capable of doing whatever a man can do. Yeah. I adore Flavia. Before I began our conversation, I saw her sitting in the dining room and got already fascinated by her appearance, just by looking at her. Our conversation confirmed her confidence and determination, and again, it's a woman. I enjoyed the journey. Even too, we are now 10 hours over schedule. Six hours still, before the train reaches the Zambian border. We are not exact on time, we are a bit late, uh, we started a bit late from Dar es Salaam, three hours late, there was a problem with the coaches, uh, the, the two coaches were, were taken to the workshops, so the program did not finish on time to repair them, so they came a bit late, that's why we are late. But we are not very much late. <laughs> My job is very challenging, actually. Uh, I am in charge of the passenger train. I should make sure that uh, the train moves safely, uh, accident-free. 
uh, I repair whatever maybe develops a fault. Every time I move, I should first open my ears to listen to the sound, open my nose to, to hear the smell, open my eyes to see. These are very, very important. Anything maybe, cons maybe can have break binding, I will smell. And I will say there is one coach which has developed break binding. I should attend to this coach. I can see maybe an object maybe down, hanging, hitting slippers. It will tell me through looking at it, seeing it. I can hear. So it is, it should not give me enough time to sleep. I should be always on duty. There's nothing like I'm now off. No. I should move coach by coach. When I go to another coach, I sit there, I chat with people, listening to the, the, the movement of the coach. I conclude this one is okay. I go to another one until I finish the whole train stop. Then I say everything is all right. I go back to my compartment. For myself, I'm proud of my family because the family, with the desire which I have, is all the members of the family which I have. My brother now is the engineer, and my sister now is in university. Since I'm young, I like to be a pilot. The, the pilot, if you want to be a pilot, you must know the geographical position of the earth, the geographical position of different parts in the earth. That's why I like very geography. The village which I stay is not a big village for me to say that I want to pull and not to study. The village which are grown, the village which like development. That's why I supposed to learn, I supposed to struggle hard in order to increase the development. That's why I feel myself, I pride myself, as the among of the ladies of that village, I want to develop it and to be to to make its name to be among the name in the world on the map of the Tanzania. I always tell them to to study more and to go further than me so that uh, uh, where I did not reach, they do that. Uh, and uh, I also encourage them to be friendly to other people so that they learn more. Uh, uh, I'm keeping uh, 10 children at my home. Yes. Uh, I have got four widows, uh, orphans, uh, who are with me, and my six children, my biological children. Uh, I've got a set of uh, one set of twins. Uh, I thank God he, he gives me brain how to keep this, this big family. That's a whole football soccer team. It is almost with the two on the bench. 